Are they waiting for the angels to come to them? Or your Lord? Or some physical manifestations of your Lord? The day this happens, no soul will benefit from believing if it did not believe before that and did not reap the benefits of belief by leading a life of righteousness. Say, keep waiting. We too are waiting. Meanwhile in London, David Shaler says he is the true Lord of Lords. No one believes him. That doesn't bother me because I was chosen by God. The former British intelligence agent says his body was filled with the spirit of Jesus in 2007, a conviction which intensifies on a visit to Jerusalem. We're in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre and this behind me is supposed to be the tomb of Christ. Well, I'm Christ, I'm not in the tomb, I'm not dead yet. But with no support, he lives in a squatter's camp outside London. By agreement with Jesus, I don't ask for money off people. If you're the Messiah, you shouldn't be asking for money. You should have faith that God will look after you. Well, there are fewer legal headaches for prophets without followers, but still plenty of moments to bring a so-called Son of God back to Earth. Do you think you're Jesus? Sorry? Are you Jesus? I am Jesus, yes. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm we're for Nightline in the Can we have some quiet? إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مدل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله Verily, all praises for Allah We seek His help and His forgiveness we seek refuge in Allah from the evil of our own souls and from our bad deeds. Whomsoever Allah guides will never be led astray, and whomsoever Allah leaves astray, no one can guide. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, alone and without partner, and I bear witness that Muhammad is his slave and messenger. Knowledge about the advent of a Dajjal has been known since time immemorial. As Bukhari narrates from Ibn Umar that Allah's Messenger وسلم, said, I warn you against him at Dajjal, and there was no prophet who came before me but warned his people against him. Even Noah salam, warned his people against him. Therefore, at Dajjal has always been a clear and present danger. However, his identity became obscured over time and sometimes forgotten. But seeing as Noah salam, was the first messenger of God, was his warning about the Dajjal a future prophecy, or did the Dajjal exist during his time? Probably not, as we shall see later, a Dajjal is a Jew born to Jewish parents. Therefore, he must have appeared on the world stage after the advent of Moses salam, and Aaron salam, who together established the original laws of Judaism through God's commandments on tablets of stone and God's direct speech to Moses salam. I have already mentioned the misidentification of the Antichrist as found in Judaism and Christianity, i.e. the Talmud of the Jews talks about Armilus, an evil and disfigured character who will fight against their awaited Messiah. But the problem for the Jews is that their awaited Messiah has already come and gone, i.e. Jesus, the son of Mary, and yet they rejected him and some even hatched plans utilizing the Romans to kill him outright. Yet Allah saved Jesus by taking him up into the heavens in body and soul, and in a state of stasis until he returns at the end of time, appropriately killing the Antichrist at the Jal on his first mission back. The Jews continued searching for their Messiah, and a large contingency migrated to Medina before the arrival of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, as they expected a Prophet to appear in the vicinity, although they were surprised he was an Arab, as too was Heraclius the Caesar of Rome and so rejected a second prophet of God. As they say in baseball, three strikes and you're out. Unfortunately, the Messiah or Moshiach awaiting the Jews in the end of days will be at the Dajjal, according to the reports I will mention. In the run-up to the arrival of al-Masih al Dajjal, Allah's Messenger وسلم, said that there would be 30 Dajjals who would claim to be prophets sent by God, and throughout history there have been many recorded self-proclaimed prophets. 
I will not elaborate upon false prophets who call to other than Islam, such as those mentioned in the Bible like Elimus Bar Jesus, the Jewish sorcerer from Cyprus, or false prophets from the Jewish and Christian eras, like Shabbatai Zvi, the 17th century Jewish savior who eventually converted to Islam, or Joseph Smith who founded Mormonism, an American Freemasonic inspired creation, or even Saint Paul, or Saul, the Jew of Tarsus, who claimed he saw a vision of Jesus and received new revelation on the road to Damascus, wrote the Bible, and turned Jesus into the son of a tripartite God who killed a third of himself by blood sacrifice to atone for the original sin that humans inherit. Neither will I look at any of the candidates thought of as antichrist figures who appeared before the era of Prophet Muhammad wasallam such as Cain, the son of Adam, who murdered his own brother and was marked for his disbelief, or Asamari, the creator of the golden calf in the time of Moses, salam, who is often cited as being the biblical Zimri, the Kabbalic sorcerer who was doomed to wander the earth unable to touch or be touched as a punishment. Although I will clarify in a future episode the strange case of the so-called Moses tablet, which has been outrageously touted as proof that a Samari is a Dajjal, which is a gross mistake and a divergence from the authentic sources. Or Judas, who betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver, and besides he apparently turned insane and was found dead after hanging himself on a tree with his intestines and the silver coins he earned strewn across the field of sorrows. Instead, I will look at some of the well-known false prophets found in Islam, calling believers away from Allah's straight path. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Anam, which is the sixth surah, verse 153, And verily, this is my straight path. So follow it, and follow not other paths, for they will separate you away from his path. This he has ordained for you, that you may become God-conscious or pious. Whilst explaining this verse, Allah's Messenger وسلم, drew a straight line in the sand with a stick and said it was like the straight path of Allah. Then he drew lines to the left and right of it and said, These are the other paths, and on every path is a devil calling the people to it, reported by Imam Ahmad. His vivid depiction of the callers to misguidance illustrated that whatever opposes the straight path is a path leading to hell, including those who abandon the straight path, even if they regard themselves as civilized, progressive and open-minded. What is more shocking from a Muslim perspective is the goal that these minor Dajjals had claiming prophethood, knowing full well that Prophet Muhammad wasallam is the seal of the prophets, or Khatamun Nabi'een, and the last one. As in Surah Al-Ahzab, which is the 33rd surah, verse 40, where Allah has clearly stated that Muhammad is not the father of any of your men, but he is the messenger of Allah and the seal of the prophets, and Allah has full knowledge of everything. Even though the Prophet ﷺ had a son called Ibrahim from Maria the Coptic, he died as a baby, thereby confirming that no male heir would be left to assume his mantle of prophethood like Solomon did from David alayhi salam, peace be upon them both. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam himself described in Sahih Muslim from Abu Huraira that, the similitude of mine compared to the Prophet sent before me is that of a beautiful mansion that was built, but was missing one brick in its corner. People would admire the building, but comment that it would be perfect if it wasn't for the one brick which is missing from it. He said, I am that brick, and I am the last of the prophets. Therefore, unlike the previous prophets who heralded the next prophet who would come after them, like Jesus salam, foretelling the arrival of Muhammad salam, as the paraclete in the Bible, after Allah's Messenger, there are no new ones. As we shall see, many false prophets appeared throughout the ages, either suffering from mental self-delusion or a God complex by Satan's whisperings, or in a more calculated and sinister way to infiltrate and destroy Islam from within. In a hadith from the Musnad of Ahmad authenticated by Shaykh al-Bani, Hudayfa reported that Allah's Messenger wasallam said, In my ummah or generation there will appear 27 lying impostors and there will be four women amongst them. And indeed I am the seal of the prophets, O Khatamun Nabi'een, and there will be no prophet sent after me. Regardless of the number of candidates, male or female, the last one to appear will be the most severe of them, the Antichrist.
Scholars point out that over history more than 30 false claimants to prophethood have already appeared, who either said revelation was brought to them on the level of previous prophets or invented newly innovated religions. But the figure given of around 30 indicates those who stand out from the rest in having the most negative impact in terms of confusing the people and leading them away from the straight path of orthodox and established Islam. In a hadith in Bukhari, Abu Huraira narrated that Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, While I was sleeping, I saw in a dream two gold bracelets around my arm, and that worried me greatly. Then I was instructed divinely in my dream to blow them off, and so I blew them off and they flew away. I interpreted the two bracelets as symbols of two liars who would appear after me. And so one of them was Al-Ansi, and the other was Musaylama Al-Qaddaab from Al-Yamama. Therefore, even the Prophet ﷺ named a couple of those among the 30 or so expected lying impostors that appeared whilst he was alive. For the sake of brevity, I will list some of the key features of false claimants to prophethood. Musaylama al-Kaddab, the liar, said that a spirit called Rahman used to visit him at night and give him revelation. He wanted to share power with the Prophet ﷺ and his followers didn't have to pray, drank alcohol, and fornicated. Musaylama was killed during Abu Bakr's caliphate by Al-Washi, the same man who had killed Hamza, the Prophet's uncle, but later converted to Islam and prayed that he could do a great deed that would cancel his regretful past. As Allah pairs compatible people together, Musaylama was married to Sajja at tamima al kahina or the sorceress and soothsayer from Yemen. Sajja claimed to be a prophetess, but she later repented and became a Muslim. Aswad al-Ansi, the soothsayer of Sana'a, won favor with the king of Yemen. Aswad was killed by Firuz, and angel Gabriel revealed it to the Prophet ﷺ. A letter from Yemen confirming the news arrived in Medina after the Prophet ﷺ had passed away. Tuleha ibn Khuwaylid al-Azdi claimed to receive verses from a spirit called Dinnun, after Allah's Messenger وسلم, passed away, Khalid ibn Walid went out to kill Tulayha, but he escaped to Syria. He converted to Islam and died fighting for it. The Prophet وسلم, said, In Taqif there is a liar. Al Mukhtar at Taqifi claimed his poetry was revelation. When Ibn Abbas heard of that, he said, He has spoken the truth, as Allah says, Certainly the devils inspire their friends among mankind. From Surah Anam, verse 121. During the reign of Ali ibn Talib, the son-in-law of the Prophet wasallam, a Jew named Abdullah ibn Sabah infiltrated the minds of new converts to Islam by claiming Ali was Allah in the flesh. Ali burnt 70 of these Alawites to death for blasphemy. Later on, successive caliphs executed false prophets, such as Al-Harith ibn Sa'id, who was beheaded by the Umayyad caliph Abdul Malik ibn Marwan and Muhammad ibn Sa'id, executed by the Abbasid Caliph Abu Ja'far al-Mansur. Other notable false prophets included Abu Mansur al-Ijli, who was crucified, Al-Mughira ibn Sa'id, who was burnt with oil, Bayan ibn Saman, who claimed to be a god, Ishaq the Mute, Mahmud al-Nisapuri, Hamim al-Mahkasi, and Abu At-Tayyab al-Mutannabi. And some, like al Hussein ibn Hamdan al Qusaybi, managed to gain a following after writing a book. In his case, he created a secretive sect called the Nusayriya, who are extreme Imami Shiites still found today in Syria and Iraq. Then, in the 19th century, during the rule of the British Empire, whose motto was Divide and Conquer, a whole swathe of false messiahs appeared. These included Mirza Ali Muhammad Shirazi, or the Bab, or Gateway and Mirza Hussein Ali Nuri, or the Baha'u'llah, or Glory of God, who founded the Baha'i religion with the help of covert Freemasonic lodges infiltrating Shiite groups in Persia. Both were imprisoned and the Bab was shot dead. The Baha'i religion is a mishmash of Shiite, Jewish and even Buddhist elements, and its world center and administration is near Haifa in Israel. Many speculate that its goals of a false one-world religion match that which ad Dajjal will bring. The British Empire's Freemasons continued to support deviant groups in the 19th century and aided Mirza Ghulam Ahmed of Qaidian in India in creating the Qaidiani religion to suppress Sunni resistance against the British Raj. 
The Qaidiani said he was a new prophet and an incarnation of Jesus, Muhammad and the Mahdi combined. He also said that Jesus died and is buried in Kashmir. He challenged a fierce critic called Mulvi Sanaullah from Amritsar to a Mubahala prayer to bring down God's curse on the liar. He claimed that God would send a plague or cholera as a punishment and fittingly, he died of cholera the next year. Qaidianis or Ahmadiyya are not considered as Muslims. Modern era false prophets include Elijah Muhammad, founder of the Nation of Islam, who said that Allah was a black African-American man in the 1930s. They unwittingly trapped Muhammad Ali the boxer and Malcolm X into their cult, but both converted to orthodox Sunni Islam later. More extreme black nationalist cults developed in the 90s, including the Ansarullah of Dr. Dwight York, who is currently serving a jail sentence of 135 years for child molestation. Also Karim Aga Khan, the Ismaili Shiite manifestation or mazhar of Allah on earth, to whom his followers bow to. In fact, their hajj is just to glimpse him. They don't pray, drink alcohol, and deal in usury. In fact, he is a billionaire. And Rashid Khalifa, who claimed to have cracked a code in the Quran linked to the number 19 based on the Jewish Kabbalah, claimed prophethood and abrogated verses of the Quran. He was stabbed to death in Arizona in 1990. The current forces working for the establishment of the so-called New World Order have not given up in the hope of creating false messiahs to delude the people and often fantasize of infiltrating the hearts and minds of Muslims. Such as the scenario written in a work of fiction by A.J. Quinnell called The Mahdi, where all the Western spy agencies combine to implant their own man at the Kaaba and shine a green laser light on him from a satellite, proving he is the Mahdi. As the last day edges closer, we may yet see more candidates that claim prophethood and fit the criteria of the lesser 30 Dajjals that will culminate to the last Dajjal of the 30, being the greatest fitna, Al-Masih Dajjal. However, we shall look into cases that have remained problematic when trying to work out who the Dajjal is. The first will be Ibn Sayyad, whom some of the companions swore by Allah was the actual Al-Masih Dajjal.